Hello, students of American government and politics. I'm Mr. Serencioni, and I want to tell you about the Madisonian model, this term we have for the fundamental structures of our constitutional system that foster democracy, power for the people, but prevent tyranny of the majority. And the design that we now see is so brilliant is the separation of powers with the resulting checks and balances combined with federalism. And this is baked into the Constitution, that instruction manual for American government. And here's one of a number of metaphors I want to give you that I think will help you to remember the difference between these things and their importance. And the Constitution is this instruction manual, kind of like a manual would put together a uh, Lego with, but far more com complicated. One that is going to help to assemble the regime, the machinery upon which all of our government and politics is built. And this machinery was designed to facilitate a functioning democracy within a large, diverse republic, something that the world had never seen before. So out of this history of monarchy, a single unified power in the crown, and the initial draft of this union, the Articles of Confederation that also failed to, to produce this uh, functioning democracy. The framers, with Madison at the head, went to forge this new model. And they went from a monarchy to three branches of government. They separated the power from that single crown into three separate branches here, visually represented by a quill for the legislative branch that writes the law, a scales for the judicial branch that interprets that law, weighs what is just, and the executive branch that enforces the law, brings the hammer down. But that separating the powers as Montesquieu laid out isn't enough because this power could still be held by ambitious people who want to hold power to rule over others. But Madison didn't think this government would be run by angels. It was going to be run by men with ambition. So the very structure would, would make it so that ambition must be made to counteract ambition, Madison writes in Federalist 51. So then this structure of checks and balances where members of each branch must work with each other or will be held at bay by ambitious people in the other branches to prevent any single branch, any single group from holding too much power. But that still isn't enough. It's combined with a new structure for government, also hadn't been seen before. It's gonna take the, the country from the firm league of friendship to a more perfect union. The constitution is more perfect, more perfect than what? That previous attempt at union that had not been united. The states under the confederation, the articles of confederation had been sovereign, yes, but all free like birds, but so free that they couldn't work together. They, that government did not function. So now there still are those separate birds. They do have their freedom, but not only are they going to have powers within them split, separated into the three branches, but there is going to be a supreme power, the federal government that will have supremacy in issues that over which it has jurisdiction, over issues of coinage, things that need to be standard across the whole country, in issues of war and peace, where the country must stand together to have a unified front, in issues between states. That's when the eagle, the national government will be supreme and bring order and a more perfect union. So these two fundamental structures provide the very backbone of the constitution. There's plenty more brilliant parts of it, but the separation of powers is a lateral between these three branches and the system of federalism, we can see, think of it as a vertical, divides power between the national state and local governments, which are fully subsidiaries of the state governments. But again, separation of powers, I want you to think of as lateral, as side to side, the three branches are co-equal by each other, but the federalism, this vertical national government for all intents and purposes is more powerful than the state governments. There are certain areas where the states have sovereignty where they rule, but overall, the federal government's at the top of this. But no single branch is at the top of the others, 
they are uh, separated but laterally. But at each level of our federal structure, there is again this separation of powers in legislative, executive, judicial. We see that same structure recapitulated. At the state level, we have a separation of powers at the state level, legislative, executive, judicial. And we even see that same structure repeated because it works quite well at the local levels with legislative, executive, and judicial. So this together is what the Madisonian model was all about. Madison didn't forge the whole constitution alone, but these structures really Madison brought to the fore. And that's why he is known often as the father of the constitution. And clearly that exaggerates to some extent, but Madison was quite brilliant. And we do have him to thank for making sure that this model for limiting majority control became what the United States uses. It prevents tyranny of the majority quite effectively by pairing the separation of powers, splitting the government to three branches with a resulting checks and balances or ambition, checks ambition, and the three branches limit each other with federalism, a system which power is divided between the national government and the states. I hope this helps. Stay sharp, stay safe.